Hello comrades and welcome to a new chess game. This game was played in Soviet Russia. Just kidding. Today I'm gonna show a game that was actually played in Italy in uh, 1923 between uh, Yates and Esteban Canal. So uh, Yates was a uh, British chess champion. He won six times the British chess championship. Or maybe we should say the uh, British Ch Championship. I don't know. Um, Esteban Canal was from Peru and he was a very, very strong player. Uh, I think he was a grandmaster too. So the reason I'm going to show this game today is because it's uh, absolutely um, interesting. It's very nice and it's a positional masterpiece. So if you want to improve your positional understanding uh, of chess, just sit back and let me try to explain you that in this video. All right, so uh, Yates started with e4 and then we had c5, which was a scene in defense, f3, e6, d4, c takes on d4, knight takes on d4, knight f6, knight c3, bishop b4, pin in the knight, bishop d3, c6, knight takes on c6, and b takes on c6. And everything up to now is very standard. This is, I'm pretty sure, uh, one of the main lines that you see uh, when you see the Sicilian defense. Okay, so the next move was castle, and then we had d5, uh, which is a very, very nice move. Takes control of the center. Here, white avoided confrontation, pushed the pawn to e5. Knight had to move back to d7, and then we had queen to g4, which is um, a quite aggressive move now. Uh, black has to protect the pawn on g7 and he brought back his bishop to f8 then we're at rook e1 g6 g5 bishop g5 queen c7 queen g3 bishop g7 f bishop f4 and then black castle and after rook goes to d1 black was done with his development uh, white sorry was done with his development not black so now, it's worth noticing something on this board. And this is what I uh, call a positional analysis. Okay? Now, try and look at the board. Don't look for tactics or any combinations. Because right now there is none. So, just look at the position and see what it tells you. This is one of the methods to improve your positional understanding. So, this position tells us a couple of things. For what concerns white, it tells us that white has a outpost on e5 which is um, very invasive for black because it's hindering black's development and counterattack you will agree on that I think um, and it's also guaranteeing free movement for white's pieces because it's this pawn is very advanced and every time you advance your pawns a lot and you protect them you're gonna gain safely space that's very good for you Black's position now. Black's position seems to be more um, strong on the queen side, seems to be very solid in the center. Black's outpost is this pawn on d5, which is controlling these two squares, e4 and c4, which are very important squares. Um, but it, it does seem like black does not have many chances to counterplay, all right? And that's a problem, because soon white might be starting an attack, maybe with, like, h4 and then h5, and then it's going to be serious troubles for black. So, in this position, Canal thought, I need to do something that turns the game into my favor, makes me gain space, and gives me counter-attacking chances. And his positional understanding told him that all the entire white strength in this moment relied on this outpost he had on e5 on this pawn. So black said, Canal said, if I manage to get that damn pawn out of the way, and take space in the center, I'm gonna win this game. So at this point, he played rook b8, and white thought, okay, he's aiming for my b2 pawn, so I just need to play b3 and I'm gonna be fine. But that's not exactly uh, the case, because then we had rook b4, which is an excellent move, and after knight b1, we had f6, which is given as a great, great move by people that analyze this game, they gave it actually an exclamation mark, so, I assume it must be a good move if he deserved an exclamation mark. Um, and in this position, white played c3, pushing its pawn forward, thinking that, okay, that's, that's 
pretty much fine with me. Uh, like I'm just gonna kick away that rook, goes back to the last rank, and then I'm gonna see about this problem here on f6. But black couldn't care less about the rook. So what he played was rather surprising for Yates. He captured the pawn on e5, he got rid of it. So black said, whatever, then I'm gonna take your rook and see, I'm up the material. Well, turns out that after black takes on the bishop on a4 and the queen has to move to h3 because as it's gonna be captured turns out that black okay black uh, pushes uh, uh, the pawn forward to e5 and now it turns out that black is done materially as a slight disadvantage materially but he has gained complete control over the center and suddenly the game looks com the game looks completely different, and he also has gained the tempo um, <clears throat> by um, kicking the queen away. So look at the board now. Look at the board here at this point of the game, and then sorry, I'm just gonna put it back where it was, so you see what I mean. Look now. I will say that yeah black is done in material but it was well, well worth it because he has now a completely dominant position his position is very strong so at this point we had uh, f3 obviously stopping any kind of further pot, pawn pushes but um, or trying to stop them because canal wasn't scared and he just went for e4 which is another great move then we had f takes e4 and then knight e5 discovered attack on the queen, now the queen has to move and has not many squares to go to so it goes to h4 which is I think actually the only square the queen can go to and after queen h4 we had queen b6 delivering a nice check so the king had to move and now black gained another tempo and we had bishop on g4 attacking the rook and the rook has to go to d2 it has got no other choice and then after that, we had bishop to s6, threatening the queen and saying to the queen, okay, find yourself another square. So the queen went to h6, even farther away from the rest of the game, right? And then we had knight takes the bishop on d3, rook takes on d3, and queen f2, threatening to give checkmate in one move. Because as you can see, if white ignores this threat, next move queen is going to take and it's going to be checkmate, right? Quite basic. So here, rook went to g1. And then bishop d4 and yet another checkmate threat that can only be stopped pretty much by capturing the bishop and then queen takes on d4 and that's what happened in the game and suddenly the material advantage the white had was lost now uh, the um, the situation is about equal but positionally white is in a world of hurt white is really bad right now so for now on there is going to be a series of moves that are um, more like slow maneuvering so I'm gonna go through them trying to speed up a bit um, but I would like to mention one thing have a look on how black from now on just keeps moving slowly but steadily to crush his opponent it is literally playing like a boa constrictor slowly killing his opponent and it does not make one mistake that's the cool thing about a great and deep posi positional understanding so this is what happened um, now this pawn push uh, was very powerful pawn to uh, f3 protecting the bishop and also threatening uh, g2 which is uh, in this type of position is uh, I would say a, a key square if you allow me to say so so king went to g1 and then we had rook f5, f5 b5 that shows how desperate white was because uh, obviously if you push start pushing pawns like that it means you have nothing better to play so rook goes to g5 threatening to capture on g2 and win the queen and after that we had g3 and followed by rook f5 knight a3 d4 knight c4 rook takes on b5 h3 rook on h5 h4 Rook goes back to c5 and as you can see black couldn't care less about what white is doing because he knows that he's crushing him and that white has no escape and it's really funny to see how this is a, a real cat and mouse play where black is the cat and white is the poor mouse 
So at this point uh, we had king goes to g2, h2, sorry, and then queen c2, rook g1, rook d5, g4, and queen takes on a2. So now black went up materially, and then we had like it was already up material, went even more up materially, if you can say so. Then we have queen g, uh, king g3, and then queen takes on b3. And now suddenly, black is three pawns up, and all the three pawns he has more on top of his opponent. They are all past pawns, so they're eventually gonna promote, right? So knight d2, threatening the queen, queen goes to b8, check, getting another tempo, king to h3, and then queen a4, threatening the knight. So now the knight has to move away, and what's gonna follow is a nice pawn push. This pawn is gonna promote, and it's unstoppable, uh, unless white wants to sacrifice its queen or its rook. So in this position, white resigned. I think it's a, it's a very, very interesting game, this one, um, because it shows how much a position and a positional understanding is actually fundamental if you wanna be great, or at least good in chess. So I tried to do my best to explain you that. I'm just going to show you again the key moment where white had a very strong position and a very strong attack coming up. And look the genius of this guy, how he managed to turn the game a few moves after at, in this position. So you went from this to this. And even though it was done materially, black i think it was well worth it so my friend i hope you enjoyed this video and see you soon